Welcome to the Guitar Dads Podcast, a podcast for Guitar Dads by Guitar Dads. This week, the Rocket Man won't be blowing out his candle in the wind yet. A 40-watt rig rundown, we rush to judge a new signature guitar, and we have a single thought on how new music is released. Are we just living in the rock past? This week on the Guitar Dads Podcast. Now, porn addicts of a guitar nature, Matt and Dave. (laughs) Ha ha! Hello everybody, I'm Matt. And I'm Dave, and welcome to the pod, everybody. This is the second time you want to talk about guitar porn. It's all guitar porn. It's all guitar porn. Come on, man. You're all, I mean, this is yeah. what it is. This is the second intro in a row where you're talking about guitar porn. You're into this. Okay. Well, well you know, let's we'll just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to leave it gonna, right there. Just, we're not going to touch that any more than it needs nope. to be. All right. Okay. Anyway, so here I'm we are. I'm not even going to touch that joke. Never mind. Um, anyway. Exactly. Welcome. Here, here we go. Welcome, everybody. We are on. All right. So if you're just joining us for the first time, thank you. And if you're listening again and again and again, thank you. Um, you know where you can find us on socials. Come over to our Facebook group, at Guitar Dads Podcast. And uh, over on Instagram, at Guitar Dads Podcast, too. Please join. Please join all the fun on Facebook. Please follow us on Instagram. And if you want to support the show, you can come over to patreon.com slash guitar dads podcast, where we have an array of tiers for you. If you want to tiers like T I E R S, not T E A R S. Although depending <laughs> on how the show goes tonight, it could be tiers the other way. Yeah. Um, and if you want to support the show for as low as a dollar a month, you can do that. We have other tiers too if you want to help us out. A dollar a month, uh, everybody. A dollar a month. That's it. Cheaper than your coffee. Don't go to um, Starbucks. No, go to Starbucks. Go to Starbucks. You can still afford the guitar. You can dance. still afford it. Exactly. So anyway, yeah. And um, you know, wherever you're listening to us right now, look down below, you know, leave us a review, comment, all that stuff. That yes. you hear it everywhere, but it really does help us out. It helps us keep this thing going, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right, Dave, what are we getting into this week on the Dataverse? Oh, if anybody told me what I was getting into with you two years ago, I mean, I don't know who would have done this. <laughs> I know if I'd ever even do this. Well, we should <laughs> we should also say, too, like as a preview, you know, we haven't had an interview in a while. There's oh, many, we got a couple things coming. There's many interviews in the works, everybody. Ideally, Dave and I would like to do like – a couple of weeks of shows maybe one interview mixed in there but you know with scheduling and everything because dave and i are dads with busy lives and it's very difficult to get people scheduled um so that's what's going on but we definitely have a bunch in the work so stay tuned and we know you guys love the interviews as well but you also seem to just like to hear us talk about this stuff so we're gonna do both yeah, and and like Matt said, we do have some interviews lined up, and so we have a couple good ones. We have Ooh, some good ones like coming down it. the pike. You and like we have a return. We might have a re- we we do. We just have to get the scheduling down. We have a return guest Ooh. who who is one of our favorites, and the stories were going on and on. We said we have to cut this thing up <laughs> That's right. into two parts. Now I'm kind of giving things away, maybe a little bit, but we had a two part episode. We're going to end up turning it probably into part three and four. So yeah, that's coming down the pike too. That's coming uh, too. So yeah. watch out. Watch out everybody. Anyway, All right. So let's get, in, let's get into the dataverse. A lot of kind of a lot of stuff going on this week. There kind of is a lot of good stuff going on. Yeah. Um, so as we kind of expected, uh, the, remember the power trip uh, festival that's happening in October in California? Yeah. And it was a, like a big to do because Ozzy was on the bill. Yes. You know, and there was some rumors that, you know, it was like Black Sabbath was going to perform. But, you know, uh, Tony Iommi didn't want to do that because he wasn't quite sure that Ozzy's health was going to be in check. And Tony was right. Um, Yeah. So unfortunately, Ozzy has had to back out. Okay, so Ozzy is out of the power trip. Is this the last we've seen of Ozzy? This is the one that's going to be at Coachella. Yeah. Yeah, like at the coach where they do it in the desert. At the grounds. Yeah, Yeah. at the grounds. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Ozzy is... You know, we've talked about Ozzy a lot. I mean, it's amazing he's gone as far as he's gotten. If this is in the if this is the end, then you know he's had a great run, and you can't blame him one second. You know, so it is tough though. I mean, if this is if this is the end, that's going to be hard for us. But you know, he's Ozzy. He'll he'll figure it out. I'm, I, I this isn't the last we heard of Ozzy. No, not. it's definitely not the last we've heard of him. Maybe from a live standpoint, but you know, they're, they're, you'll definitely be hearing it from him in some capacity. 
Um, but yeah, it's a, this could be it from a from a live standpoint. But you know, time will tell. Yeah. Um, an, another thing that hit the news. Speaking of, uh, you know, never hearing from somebody from a live capacity in a live capacity again. Elton John has finally completed his final tour. Yeah. Um, it was like an incredible number of shows. It was like 300 plus. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. Over the co- kind of broken up because of the pandemic too. But um, so, but during his final performance in Sweden, he did say that this isn't the end, you know, but he did, he did go on to kind of, you know, elaborate on that and say that this is the end of touring, but you know, he's not done yet. So there may be a one-off. There may be some other live performances yeah. elsewhere. But he's not. He's uh, really. Of course. He's not going to do like any Vegas residencies. Nope. I think he would do another Vegas thing. See, I agree with you. Yeah, or something I, like that. But you're right. Other than that, it'll just be one-offs and not a big world tour. But good for yeah, him. He can I mean, do a how residency. Old, how old is Elton? He's seventies. He's in his seventies. Yeah. yeah, I think he could do. He could definitely do a. Um, he could definitely do a Vegas residency. You know what I mean? And that's maybe yeah. that's what he that's what might what, what he might do because you know you know you do like four or five shows. Everybody's doing these residencies now, and they're like like two or three, four or five shows, and they're calling it a residency. You know, I so also want to like, I also want to bring something up um, about these old guys doing all this singing. So because I've had an experience lately that I've you know now that my band is out there finally. You know, post pandemic, we're out there doing doing gigs pretty regularly, and we're doing four hour gigs. You know, I realize how tough it is to have the stamina to do these gigs. Like me as a singer yeah. and as a and playing guitar, and I like my voice has really taken a toll. And here's the weird thing that I've discovered is it's not just that you know maybe my voice feels strained; it's that I get physically exhausted, and then it's just hard to sing and sing in key. So yeah, like I don't know how these guys do it. You know, and now that I'm getting older, like I feel it a little bit more, right? And you know, now that I, you know, I had all that time off over the pandemic, it's like you really got to get back into shape and doing this. So, you know, it really makes me realize like the amazing shape, especially these older guys are in to be like Mick Jagger must be like in like peak physical condition to be able to do what he does. Run around I don't think the, Mick Jagger's ever around. been in peak physical condition. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he's thin as a rail, right? So he's not carrying he a lot of weight. So you think about like, you know, to be able to run around and do that and, you know, and sing and run around and dance, like it takes a lot of energy out. So, so what yeah, I find myself- He doesn't myself, do that as much anymore though. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So what I've found myself needing to do is, you know, dial back the kind of, you know, like don't be so full on at these gigs- um, you know, and, and make sure I can keep the singing in check, um, with, you know, without getting my body exhausted. Right. So, so like, you know, I've, I, if I'm feeling that now in my forties, you know, playing a few gigs, you know, these guys that are doing it, granted, I, I haven't been a professional musician my whole life. Like these guys have being off and on tour, but it's, it's a big deal to be able to do this. Like it takes, oh, come on, Ellen John's just been you. sitting on a bench for his whole career. Well, it takes... <laughs> <laughs> but no, but no, you're right. No, no but I'm that, just kidding. That's actually, that's actually a really good point. He's not doing what Mick Jagger is doing, what Steven Tyler is doing, running around these massive stages, right? Because that, that, I mean, you got to be in physical shape to do that kind of stuff. And you absolutely, and, and you're right. Do. Maybe the fact that he's stuck behind a piano makes it a little easier for him, if we're honest. It, it right? might. It very well might. I mean, it's <laughs> it's 76 though. He still looks good. He still sounds pretty good. He um, does. Yeah. You know. So you got to hand it to him. You know, I've heard yeah. that Billy Joel has lost a step or two. I haven't heard. He has. Um, I mean, Billy Joel definitely has lost a step or two. I haven't heard what Elton John has sounded like recently. I should go on YouTube and check it out. But you know what I heard anyway. about Billy Joel recently? Yeah, and he's done this for apparently for a long time. He will purchase. Um, he will purchase some front row seats. Oh I yes, how many? But a good number, and he will give them. He will have his crew go up to like you know up in the balcony and like the, yeah. the real nosebleeds and hand the tickets out. Because he feels, and he's probably right, yeah, that these are the real fans, right? I want them yeah. to come up and be close. The people that can afford, like, you know, fifteen, two thousand, fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars a night, yeah, more. Yeah, these aren't yeah. the real fans, you know. The, the the real fans are sitting in the nosebleed. So bring them up, let them see. The yeah. Show. So you know, Kid Rock talked about that. Kid Rock, uh, I think he does like either a lottery or something for. Oh, his, he does. For oh, his, interesting. yeah, for his fan club for the front row seats because he made the same complaint. He's like, I don't want to just see some like rich guy with a hot chick and the hot chick is all, in, all excited, but no one else is. Right. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. He's like, it's just boring after a while to see that out in your audiences. So, no, that's great. Good for Billy and good for uh, Kid Rock for doing that kind of stuff. That's probably the only time I'll say good for Kid Rock. Uh, that's right. Well, good for uh, speaking of Billy. Um, I never knew. I never knew who this guy's name was, but now we do. Um, Billy White Jr., who is the designer, the uh, famed designer of the GNR logo, has passed away. Oh yeah. Which made me quest. Which made me wonder. What are uh, some other? What are some of the most iconic, most recognizable, immediately recognizable band logos? Oh, that's a ever? great. That's a great right? one. That's such a great I, one. First thing comes to mind: Aerosmith for me. Yeah, right? of course, you know, Aerosmith. You, you know, yeah, GNR um, for sure. I mean, for me, it's. Um, I mean, Zeppelin didn't really have a logo, huh? But they no, had like a they specific. Didn't. I was font. trying to think about that. But Zeppelin yep. had like the whole like Zoso or, and um, all those the symbols and stuff, which were pretty cool. So that's pretty iconic to me. I actually saw somebody with the full Led Zeppelin four logos on their on their bumper the other day, like as a bumper oh. sticker. I was like, that's so cool. Um, very cool. That's very cool. So. Um, yeah, so that I, that's a pretty iconic thing for me. But then you're right. There's other, I mean, probably one of the most unmistakable band logos, you know, and I'm not a massive fan, but the Grateful Dead. Oh, of course. You know, yes. That's a massive Absolutely, thing. yeah. You know, like that's just unmistakable. Either, you know, I'm think I'm talking about the head, you know, the skull with the lightning yep. in it. Um, but yep. also the bears, you know, the bears are another really iconic thing. Boston. Um, yeah, one? Boston. Yep, yep. They're, they're another one with that kind of... So you're talking about the spaceship, like this on the cover yeah, yeah, of that spaceship. album. You yeah. know, I never knew until what there was, was a couple yes, of months, I years know. ago, like a year think, ago, you told me that it's an upside yes. down guitar and I never realized. And I only realized that like from social media, probably a few years ago when somebody yeah. pointed it out and I was like, oh my God, my mind is blown. Um, yeah. So <laughs> You'll Boston. You'll never it. Yeah. But, but, but is that really a band logo or is that like, that was is like it? a well, cover that's, that's like a cover well, album. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. It's album like a cover, cover yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. album cover. Um, what, um, what other some 38 other, special 38 special oh, yeah. yeah maybe yeah, yeah they, you know, know you know acdc for sure acdc with like the yep. bolt in the middle yeah is a big one um you know iron Maiden. prince does prince qualify because oh yeah through, prince is so symbol many kinda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know like you just know the logos up but it's actually it's actually a really good point because a lot of it is isn't necessarily a low. I guess it is a low. Roll, I mean, we're forgetting like the, the stones. We're forgetting those stones. Which, massive. You know, yeah, that's a massively massive one. recognizable. Yeah, that's a massive one. Um, the stones uh, with the lips, right? And then um, that that kind of brought me to another question. I realized has the days of the band logo, like that really like focused band logo. You know the band. No. You know the logo. Has that gone away? No, dude. There's there's it's it's. It's still happening. Look at Dirty Honey. They got a great logo. With well, the Dirty lips. Honey, yeah, but they they yeah. they are very they are very you know they respect the they 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 have the history in their hands and then in their minds, right? Oh, they yeah. they are kind of they're a different breed. Yeah, and Dave, but know? Dave, the, the shirt that you have on right now, which our listeners can't see, Pink Floyd with the prism, like the Dark Side of the Moon prism. Yeah, thing. but that's the Dark Side of the Moon. That's the album. Yeah, right? it is, that's but it's not, like synonymous with Pink logo. Floyd, right? It so, is. Yeah. So yeah. you could argue like it's kind of a similar thing, right? So, but you know, it is. you you could also say like GNR. Uh, do you when you say GNR, you mean the logo like the one I have behind me with the guns and the roses, right? Yes. But there's yeah. all you know. The other thing that's super iconic is the uh, is album cover art, right? Like like right. Appetite for Destruction with the skulls yeah. of everybody in the cross. Like so, I guess you know, band logos and cover art tend to be kind of synonymous, you know. At some well, point. that 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 yeah. that's the third question I was yeah. going to bring up is. What about some other cover art that or cover uh, album covers that are absolutely iconic that the yeah. minute you hear the band, that's the particular album that 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 lightens yeah. up in your head, lights up in your head. Well, another, another thing I want to bring up for a logo. Not, I mean, this is the thing. It's not really a logo, but like a font, like like Metallica, like Metallica, nobody yes. else has that font right. that looks i mean megadeth kind of has it if we're honest megadeth but does, but yeah. metallica like that specific way that it's written it could almost say anything and you would think of but there's metallica. that dave mustaine history of yeah metallica, that's that's right know? but so metallica yeah. it, you know it could read anything it could say like guns and roses and you would th right. and you would think it's metallica because well, the there are sure you, yeah. there are if you google it you can see like other there's other um there's there's shirts or other like uh merch you can buy or not merch necessarily band licensed merch but 
there's other like Metallica type stuff that's out there that if you zoom in closely, it doesn't say Metallica, it, doesn't it says say something Meta- else. <laughs> yeah, because because you're right. It's just the look of that font and and how it's spaced and yeah. everything else yeah, yeah. from afar. You think it says Metallica, and you know? all that stuff is trademarked, right? It's all yep. trademarked and it's all protected. So, yeah, I mean that's why it's like it's just it's just it's, it's unmistakable that it's related to Metallica. And there's so many bands that have things like that, right? That there's have like a font, and like you said, the way the letters are spaced and that kind of thing that makes it yep. really iconic. So yeah, and there's so many. It's probably endless. You could think of like a million bands that have very iconic. Um, um, logos like that so yeah no it's true um well speaking of a band that didn't have a (laughs) speaking of a band and and iconic logos this band did not have an iconic logo but and since we have since i wrote these notes for for tonight's show uh this has been uh accelerated a little bit um yeah what is it the question is is the creed reunion happening oh god does anybody want a creed reunion I think they do. I really think they really? do. It's gaining popularity. Oh. Yep. And as of today, so re- earlier this week, um, the Facebook photo, if you care about stuff like this, the Facebook photo changed. The website became password only. Uh, Tremonti has made more and more comments. And today, they released a teaser, with Summer of 99 teaser that's out there, which essentially is saying there's going to be a reunion. And Tremonti has made comments during interviews and not in the not too uh, uh, distant few, uh, uh, past that it, it's just about timing because he's had the, his own solo gig. He's had the Sinatra stuff. He's yep. had Alter Bridge. And so, and, and obviously Miles is at Slash. Yeah. And, uh, I don't Trying to get all those schedules together. Do yeah. we need to see a Creed reunion? No, we don't need a Creed reunion. This is ridiculous. Why? Because I think like Creed um, had their time and. I think people look back and they're like, mm, yeah, that wasn't as good as I thought it was. Well, I, I disagree. You disagree? Because I feel like I disagree, and I'll tell you why. why? That first, now granted like, that you could argue that, that wasn't the, when the rest the, of the catalog. Yeah, the first album wasn't what they got famous off of. Well, no, it isn't, but that's the best. Well, and for, I think Creed for fans me and you, have come to... For me yeah. and you, it's the best, but most people want like, can you take me higher? Well, and they'll do that stuff. But With um, at, wide open. I mean, that song is lame. I think with this... Uh, now, it's going to be interesting to see who these audiences are. We probably know the demographic, but it would be interesting to see like, if the demo is a little bit younger... This is a good sign for rock. That's rock is becoming more. People are craving I mean, and looking for this kind of stuff to come back. But these you know? would be. But Dave, these would be people around our age that would be interested in this. So I don't know. Well, let's see. Let's see what happens. I don't know. I, man. I think it's. I think it'll be kind of cool. I mean, I we you and I love Mark Tremonti well, as a guitarist and an artist in general. Um, I did get to see Creed back in the day. Um, of course, they were nosebleed seats at the TD Garden, but. It was a killer show. I, I mean, saw was... I saw Creed on their first show in Boston at you what's did, now yes. the House of Blues in Avalon. It was that first album that was out. Nobody really knew who they were. I mean, enough people knew because it, but it was before. You know, it was when they were like a hard rock band before they became this kind of you know lame you know um, poppy rock poppy band. rock band. You know, they were more kind of aggressive. You know, more along the lines of what Alter Bridge is doing, if we're honest. You know, yeah, like my own prison. Yeah, like those my own prison, that kind of stuff. And like Scott Stapp had a great kind of medley voice, but you know, well, can he, he still sing? I, yeah, who knows? And and the other thing, like I have a really bad taste in my mouth about Scott Stapp because he seemed to like turn into a real jerk. You he know, has. It, like so, like I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like I, this is like this is like a reunion that I don't, nobody really needs. <laughs> Nobody needs, but there's, a, my there's opinion, a huge demand for maybe it. There, maybe there, maybe there is. Maybe there is. I mean, cer- certainly they would not be. They they're not going to be putting money on the line if they don't think there's a demand, right? So, oh yeah, they, yeah. They, they they've already put a ton of money into this. They've they've released the, they're releasing these teasers. Mar- you know, Mark has been in these interviews, like yeah. I said. Yeah, he said it's very happening. careful about how he's yeah. phrasing it. You know, so he's he's mentioned this in, in the past couple of years. So yeah. Um, no, you know, I know. It's obviously, I, I it's going to happen. Yeah, no, I think it has a very good chance of happening. It sounds like it's happening for sure. But you know, I'm not going to be there, so 
Now it's not going to be as big as as an Oasis reunion. Which no, we also I mean there's no, happening, no, but. no. An Oasis, the music still holds up. Where I don't think Creed does. Yeah. So I mean, this is just my opinion. You guys might be massive Creed fans and think I'm nuts. No, so, it's interesting. You know, yeah. if if the, you know, I can't, there these. This is not going to be like an arena tour. Let's face it. This is going to be a club. Oh, tour. you think so? Um, really? Yeah. No, oh, I, this is not going to be an arena. Oh, you don't maybe think you're right. You think this is? No, I have well, no idea. I mean, I think it could be an arena tour. This could be like a secondary arena tour, like like the Worcester Centrum or the again like a smaller Aganis arena, arena okay. or something. Small yeah. arena tour. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I think. But well, if it's going to be a club show, I'll tell you what we we do sh- we really should go. No, we I'm really not. Really should go. No, 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 no. I'm going to convince you to go. No, I'm out. And for that reason, I'm out. I'm out. Well, <laughs> moving, right, on moving on to more news. Speaking of something, one I'm more out hard on. rock. One more hard rock <laughs> band. Speaking of bands from uh, uh, that era, yeah, who who actually are continuing. Now we've we spent a lot of time in the show talking about legacy acts. Have yeah. we seen? Have we seen the first younger, and I'm and I'm kind of putting younger in quotes, air quotes here. Yeah. Have we seen the first younger act kind of turn themselves into their own legacy act at this point? Because Godsmack. Recently, Godsmack <laughs> has now, Sully Erna has now said, and now I don't believe him, but he has made the point that they're kind of done making music and they're going to keep touring and they're going to be good for him. All the old stuff. No, good for This is what we do. We talked to one. We talked about this last podcast or the podcast before that recently. Well, we talked about, we talked about the South American tour got canceled because of lack of ticket sales, no, no. which is interesting to me that he's making this call. You know, no, we talked about the, there's a title of a podcast, a couple podcasts ago called do the classic rock bands need to release new material. And we said well, they're not a classic rock band. Well, Godsmack they are now not classic rock, dude. They came out thirty years ago. <laughs> no, they're not thirty years old. Uh, are they? Or, well, man, yeah, late night, uh, early uh, night, uh, mid nineties. Oh yeah, maybe they are. They're yeah. close to that. Well, they're not thirty yet. They're close. But they're close. They're like twenty five years old, right? So, so yeah, or you're right. They're on the no, edge. No, they're more. They're more. Yeah, yeah. they're on, you're, you're, it's on the edge of what you would consider classic rock. But but I think yeah. But we meant we meant like the bands like Journey. We talked about them. We meant bands like Guns and Roses. Yeah, and we meant eighties. We meant eighties and and older bands. Seventies. Yeah, eighties yeah. and older bands. But 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 I think this qualifies as well. And you know, good for them for realizing like why waste all this time doing new music when we can just go and tour the stuff that made us famous that we know everybody wants to hear, right? Um, I don't know. I mean, you, you know, so I say that the other side of it is maybe they're selling themselves a little short and they should put out some new material. You know, I don't know because, you know, I say that on one hand and then I say how much I've really enjoyed new material from Miles and Slash, from Alter Bridge, from, yeah. you know, from these bands that, you know, for honest, have been around quite a long time. And, um, you know, I do enjoy the music. You know, we mentioned, um, Def Leppard and some others. Yep. You know, I do enjoy the new music. It's kind of cool to see them doing this. So, you know, if you're a hardcore Godsmack fan, this is disappointing to you. But, you know, do they need to? I think what we concluded in that episode was do they need to do it? No, they don't need to do it. No, they don't need you know? to. But I also don't qualify them in that classic rock, same classic rock yeah, category right. they don't, they that don't we put, you know, other it. bands in. Um, now, I will say this in fairness to the, to the whole argument, for me at least. I I never really gave them a you know a, a good shake at the beginning because I wasn't totally into Godsmack and then I almost like kind of wrote them off and never really listened to them too much until you know the last like you know bunch of years and then I realized wow I really missed out because they really are a freaking killer band and their latest their latest maybe their last record is awesome yeah no maybe it is I mean that yeah so yeah you're right I mean they they were a good band they are a good band. You know, it's too bad if they don't want to do it. But I, you know, at the same time, it's like they don't necessarily need to. So that's what it is. So, yeah, it, but it is an interesting thing. And it's interesting. It's coming up after we had that conversation a couple of pods ago. But, yeah, see, um, maybe Sully's. Hey, Sully, thanks for listening, man. We appreciate yeah, it. Yes, Sully, come on the podcast, dude. <laughs> He's a fellow Boston guy. We we want, we need, yes. we need to get you on. Um, so another bit of news. He grew up next door to me. Yeah, he grew up in the town next door to me. Yeah, yeah that, that's right. He He's did. even like a North Shore guy, right? Well, he's a he's he grew up in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Yeah, which yeah, I which guess is, that's Merrimack Valley. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's Merrimack Valley. It's not Merrimack Valley. It's not yeah. North Shore, but um, but it's still you know it's north of Boston. So anyway, yeah, he's a he's a he's a fellow Massachusetts guy. Um, 
So another thing going on. So as a follow up to our conversation about AI and music, and we had some conversations about, you know, what does this mean even legally? So it turns out Universal Music Group is, of course, extremely concerned about this. And they actually called all, on Congress. They they um, visited a subcommittee. Their um, uh, general counsel visited a congressional subcommittee um, to pass new rules regulating AI and music. And the short of it is really that they went to Congress and said, hey, look, these people that are using AI to generate, you know, to make, you know, if you're going to use any of our artists' name and likeness, or really likeness, and what we're really talking about is their voice. If you're going to use any of our artists' voices, you need to pay us a royalty. In Congress, you need to pass a law that compels these AI companies, if their AI engines are going to use our artists as, you know, the algorithm or the the data input into the into the AI um, into the models, then you need to pay us a royalty that's commensurate with that. So we knew this was, we kind of called that this was coming when we did that, right. when we did the podcast about AI and music. So it's just a quick update to say, you know, this is happening. You know, we're in a new world with AI and music. And of course, Universal Music Group, which probably has the most, you know, artists on their roster than probably, they're probably the one of the largest, if not the largest, have a lot to lose on this. So of course they're gonna they're gonna make yep. their opinions known to Congress. So you know this is just something that we, I just I just figured that was an interesting update that we should give the listeners. So we'll, we'll see what happens. It's something to, it's it, yeah exactly and it's something to follow. Yeah. You know, uh, so we will keep we will keep you guys in the in the loop on this stuff because it, it's definitely an interesting topic for us. You heard it here first. Um, at, yeah, <laughs> as you know, we, as you listen to recent pods, we've been talking about this kind of stuff for a long time. So. Uh, we will keep you up to date. Yeah, let's go. What um, else we got, Dave? Anyway, let's, uh, shall we talk about, speaking of uh, a new world, a whole new world. <laughs> we should talk about, I thought this was an interesting topic to bring up. Yeah, let's hear um, it. Because you're seeing this trend now more and more, and I wonder if it's going to gain even more traction, is that, is has the day of the album passed us by? Oh, and do bands need to release full albums anymore? And if they do, do they release them in the same fashion that they used to? Meaning you're seeing a lot of bands now, and especially, you know, uh, newer bands release singles. Oh, everybody. And they're not releasing. Yeah, everybody's doing it. And they're not releasing full albums. Now the album is available. There is an actual album, but you don't really hear about the album release. You hear, you just hear a new song and then you hear another new song and it's been marketed to you and promoted. So is that the, is that the, the, the new thing we're going to see in the future? Is that going to happen more? And will the actual idea of an album kind of go away? Well, I hope it doesn't, but, but to your point about everybody is doing this, every single artist we've had on this podcast, which is kind of a few now, um, has said, this is a, uh, this is the standard, this is how you release new material and music. You do it one at a time. It doesn't make any sense to drop a whole new album without at least releasing a few singles ahead of time. And that's because we're in this really fast paced world of social media and keeping people's interest is not easy. I mean, why do you think Dave and I give you a podcast every week? Right. <laughs> because we want to keep showing up in your we feed. Gotta, we want to keep you yeah, interested. Yeah. You know, so it's the same thing. I mean, an artist needs to do that especially lesser known artists right they can't just draw you know they can't just drop an album and disappear for a while it needs to be this continuous thing now artists yep. that are more established can get away with it because they have such a loyal fan base That's so they right. can get away like joe bonamas is a great example he'll like tease a single and then a couple months later drop the album and it's done drop right? the whole album you know but he's yep. someone that does an album every couple of years Right. If you're not doing that, if you don't have that kind of, you know, um, you know, work, you know, or time or, you know, if you just don't have that in the bag, then releasing singles gradually makes a lot of sense to keep people's interest. Like this is just kind of like agreed. This is the way you do it. Will it? I, and I think you bring up a really interesting point, Dave. Will this get away from full albums? I really hope not, because. Like you and I, because we're classic rock fans and we've been listening to music a long time, you know, we appreciate the album, right? Like we, we do. love to yep. hear. You want to put it on yeah. and listen to it start to finish. Yeah. Yep. 
you want to hear what an artist is going through and where this is coming from, right? And you don't just want to listen to the single. You know, we fought, th this has yep. been a battle that's been going on since really since like online, you know, MP3s even started when you can just download one song um, at a time, you know, where you didn't have to go to the store and buy the album. And at first everybody thought, oh, this is a great idea because I don't have to buy an album and I really only like one song and the rest of it sucks. Right. <laughs> so, and I think people well. really, <laughs> I think people really embrace that idea. And I think for a while the album was in jeopardy. And then I think with streaming, now that you have albums, it's not just, oh, I go on iTunes and buy a song for 99 cents. When streaming came in, it brought the album back to say, look, you have all this at your at your disposal now. You don't just have to buy one right. song at a time. So the album came back, I think, because of streaming. But now, well, but you're right. In order to keep people interested, especially when you release the new material, it has to be done in this way. So it's almost like you're waiting to do this and it's building excitement, which I, I think it's fine, but it does annoy me sometimes when I know that these, these guys got an album in the bag and I'm, I got to wait, you know, six months to hear it. It annoys me as a yeah. listener because I do want to hear the album. Um, well, it, it does, it does, it does a couple things. And I, and I wonder if this is going to, if, if the mainstream music fan is actually even going to realize that this is happening um, how many bands that we know and love and old and new that, you know, they, their sound changes over the course of their history. Right. But that is portrayed in an album. Right. So you hear, you know, uh, yeah. you know, name a band and you hear their first album and their second album doesn't sound the same. And they, maybe they change their sound a little bit for the next album. Right. And it's kind of interesting to see that evolution of the band. Right. Is that concept going to get lost? And also something that's interesting that I heard now, of course, because I'm talking about it on the show, I can't, I won't be able to remember who said it, but I did, I did see an interview with an artist, um, a relatively popular one talking about how this can bode well for set set list development. Meaning instead of, if you put it out on a whole new album, you, you may end up disappointing some fans that come to the show. They want to hear certain songs from the new album. If you're only putting out four or five new songs, Boom! Those go into the set list. <laughs> now you've pleased everybody. Yeah, no, that, there's you know? something to be said for that. But but there's also something to be said for catering to your more hardcore fans and playing some True. deep cuts and stuff, which right. most well, artists that, that, like to, to do. The, to this artist's point is that that kind of opened up the availability of the deep cut now because instead of having to to play through the majority of a new album, you can play through the three or four singles that have been released since your last tour. Um, and then you can dive deep in, into whatever else you want to yeah, dive deep into, yeah. you know, but I think, but, and, and, and I think you have that flexibility now with the paradigm of, of streaming because, you know, right. the artist, you know, it doesn't matter probably, well, I guess it does matter because if somebody has a strong album, then they're going to get more streams because people are just going to play the album over and over again. But at the same time, if people like four songs and they only play those over and over again, the artist is going to get the streams you know, either way you could argue. So it's like, you right. know, it's kind of conducive to both things. So, but, but to your point, you know, it might behoove an artist to stay more relevant to, to put out songs one at a time and maybe even never put out an album. I, I, I think it's an interesting thing. I hope it doesn't happen. Um, but I, I can see that it, it could, it could happen. So yeah, I think I think maybe over time, you know, where where bands really you, you start to kind of you know, let's just let's just be morbid about it. The older bands, the older world kind of starts to die off and it's already happening. You know, gradually over time you're going to see this evolution where bands don't they don't know any better. This is just the way the music industry is, yeah. and they're just going to be releasing. New I music. hope not. So maybe I the album not. does go away. I hope not, Dave, because no, I because I, cause I think you. there's something special about a band having a catalog of work, getting into a studio, working with a producer, hashing out the songs or writing songs in the studio and having it be being, you know, somewhat cohesive of a piece of work. I think that that's a special thing in music that we can't let go. Yeah. And the other, well, I guess the other piece of that is how many bands that, that, you know, you, you hear about how many songs they've written for a particular album and maybe it's 30 
and only eleven make the cut. We never yeah, hear. Yeah, that's a good point. And how many other, bands? You know, and here's another thing: how many bands go into studios and record? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Just doing it at home, you know, home studios. You know, yep. so yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I I think there's something huge about a good producer and doing albums the old fashioned way, which is you do it as a cohesive piece of work. I think there's something really important about that. Maybe call me old school. Yes. I mean, maybe I'm just old no. school. But yeah. Well, you know, there's in it, with everything in life, you know, changes are going to come and yeah. you have to adapt to change. But I think in this case, this is kind of just to me, the way music is, it's just you, you, uh, I mean, you know, like I said, maybe 30 years from now, you're just the, the idea of a band creating an entire album is just like, you know, an aberration. Wow. Well, all they gotta put on do, a whole album, yeah, well, you know, but that, well, that day is a long time coming from now. All they got to do is sing like one song and then AI takes it and makes the rest of the material for the rest of their lives. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> As long that's as you're paying right. royalties to Universal Music Group, you'll be fine. Uh, exactly. Anyway. Nope, that's right. All right. They'll be happy. What do we think? You want, well, anyway. want to move on? Shall we get into some gear? You um, want to talk about this Alex Lifeson thing? Yeah, let's get into that because that kind of lit up the lit up the Facebook group and got a, a lot of people like you know up in arms about it. But let's put that on the back burner. We're gonna and we will talk about that on this episode. Okay. But we're gonna take this to Patreon as well. Yeah, because we you know maybe we got some hot takes on this thing. But let's um, we got a couple of minutes. What do you want to talk about? Well, as we close, but the I show? do want to quickly I do want to quickly shout out and thank um, you know Philip Carter of the Forty Watt Podcast for helping me put together my new pedal board, which is like a massive thing. Uh, ridiculous in, <laughs> in nature, but it is what it is. Yeah. Um, but uh, helping to devise the uh, the schematic and being able to get like a stereo rig going, which I was really excited yeah. to be able to do. We should po Philip so. posted in his group. Definitely go check out his group, the Forty Watt Podcast. Um, but we should grab that and post it in our group as well. Um, mm. The schematic. <laughs> Philip made a schematic for how. So, so, so Dave, cool. just give the overview of what what you're doing and and talk about like what the end result was. I think that's what's m m most important. <laughs> so really, this the the a, a lot of this kind of like was a uh, it, it kind of was spawned from when I purchased the 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 Walrus uh, M uh, M1 and the D1, and those are my first two real stereo pedals. Um, but I never was running them in stereo. They were all just mono and I was, uh, you know, they were mono or, du I, I or had dual them running or dual mono or dual mono. You know? Yeah. Um, but I was running them just into the, into the Marshall Jubilee and I wanted to be able to, cause I had them in the effects loop of that amp and I wanted to be able to use the hot rod deluxe and tap into that loop as well. And, um, Philip was able to devise this cool schematic really uh, pretty easily. And, uh, it made sense. And it was like, why didn't I think of that? That's, that totally makes sense. Um, and where to put some of the other pedals, uh, some of the other modulation and time-based pedals that I, they weren't going to be in the loop, um, and how to get those in, in the right chain in the right order. Um, and so it's, it's cool. I love it. It sounds great. So explain um, to me what so you got. So you be... got, you basically got you like drive. You got, you basically got like a wet, wet a wet dry rig with stereo. Oh, so I'm not going to get into tech terminology but you basically, here because I'm going to get smashed in the group for this. But basically what's um, going on with this rig is you got a stereo rig with stereo chorus, right? Going yep, into the. I got stereo chorus, stereo delay, and stereo reverb. Exactly. Going through these okay. amps in a stereo rig. And it's really yep. cool. And all the drives are obviously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I thought what's interesting about it is that you're not doing it all in front of the amp like they would do on TPS on that pedal show. Um, you're right. doing it. You're doing the um, the time. It's like based, a dual loop. You're doing the time based thing in like a dual loop, which I think was interesting. Um and I think that's where Philip schematic was really important in figuring out how it was going to work. Yeah, yeah. And and it, and that's really cool because you get it after you know, the drive sections and the, yeah. and I guess the modulation as well. So you're getting a kind of unique sound there. Um, and that that's cool. I'd love to be in the room and hear it. Oh, it sounds insane. It is. And, no, you have you tried a ping insane. pong delay where it just goes back and forth I between the cabs? Yet, no. No, but I do. Oh, right, do now that. I got two delays because I'm, I'm, I am running both delays because and one of them is in, in, in the stereo loop. 
um, or in the loops of both. Yeah, uh, but you need to have like actual. Ste- yeah, you got to like put I actual stereo do. like delay sound, so you get like you're right. You know what I mean? Like you get it bouncing back and forth, or you get back and forth. a little more in one and a little less in the other. Like just playing around. Yeah, you'll have to come over playing around yeah. cool stuff like that. But yeah, stereo rigs. I mean, talk about going down a rabbit hole. Stereo rigs will do it too. <laughs> I've never. I haven't done this. I mean, Dave has done this. I've never. Had a, I've done a dual mono rig, very but cool. I haven't done a true stereo rig like he's talking about. But dual mono rigs are also pretty incredible, if you ask me. Just running two amps at the oh, same yeah. time is incredible. And especially doing That's a incredible. wet dry is pretty cool, too. Um, yes. But, but Dave's taking... That's essentially what I was doing before. Yeah, you, you were, but now you're taking it to a next level with this full yeah. stereo rig with these modulation and time-based pedals. It sounds insane. Yeah, it's just it's really insane. Cool. I'm so happy. It's so cool. I love it. Cool. Um, All right. Well, well, let's talk a little more about it at Patreon. We'll talk about Alex Lifeless and uh, Les Paul Custom, which I think is a big, you know, weird thing for him to come out with. But, um, you know, we can talk more about that at the and the Patreon as well. Yeah, but it, 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 <laughs> so it, I, wait a minute. Hold on a second. You can't end the episode yes, like we that. Can. Is this Alex? Is this Alex Life's? <laughs> is this is this Epiphone? Like, so just because. Like Rush is essentially retired, you know. Well, he never played an Epiphone. He never played. He a never Les played Paul an Epiphone. A, and all this. Wait a minute. Stuff. Did he ever play a Les Paul with a with a Floyd on it? In Rush, I'm not a big Rush fan, so I don't know. But when I go and Google, I actually don't know. When that. I go and Google it, my sense is his what what I see when I Google his gear over the years. One of the one of the more standard things that was in his rig was a an ES three three five of some shape or form. So yeah. now he's releasing a Les Paul with a Floyd. Like what the hell? It's weird. But a good guitar is a good guitar. I'm what sure if it's a cool guitar. A really, what if you pick this up? I, I and, and I, you're I, like, well, this is a great guitar. Well, this is why it's cool, and I'll tell you why it's cool. And then we can maybe maybe we can we can end because we're almost out of time. Then we'll wrap. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is the first Les Paul Access um, Epiphone version, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think there is another Epiphone Access, which means. A Les Paul with a Floyd and an Epiphone. I, I, I could I right. could be wrong. Somebody tell me I'm wrong, but I, I'm, I'm I don't know if I'm wrong on this. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, in terms of like an actual release, other people have modded their guitars to do no, this, no, 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 an actual release, release. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because it's always yeah. been the Les Paul access has been a thing, um, and I want to say it's mainly been a custom shop thing. I don't know if. You can get a standard with a Floyd. I, I'd have to do some research, of course. I don't. I don't know. Um, this is the classic. You know, what else can we make up today? I, I don't. I, I, I don't know <laughs> that there's a. I don't know that there's a Gibson USA. You know, stock with a Floyd Gibson. Maybe I'm way off on this. Maybe there is. But either way, this is kind of cool. If you want that, this is kind of cool. It, it just is. So. Well, we got we have a lot more opinions on this, uh, and we are going to take this over to the Patreon. And if you want to join us over there, you can go over to patreon.com slash guitar dads podcast and help support the show at a, a various tiers that we have available for you. And um, uh, also, don't forget, check us out over on uh, Instagram at guitar dads podcast Facebook group. Having a lot of fun talking about this Alex Lifeson guitar as well. And a few other things going on right now, making the rounds and pissing people off um, in the group. So come join all the fun if you're interested. And of course, thank you for listening, all our loyal listeners. And if you're listening to this for the first time, we can't say thank you enough. We appreciate you. Right, Matt? Oh, yes. We love you for for taking time out of your day to listen to the Guitar Dad. So thank you so much. Even if you're listening to us on two times speed, we appreciate it. Thank you. (laughs) And I hope my chipmunk voice sounds good. (laughs) But for now, that was this week's Guitar Dads podcast. That's it. Keep rock alive. Catch you on the flip.